everybody's here. Yeah, We've got um, Greenmount Access TV is videotaping and archiving on YouTube. If anybody wants to see again, you can later tonight or tomorrow search Hyde Park Select Board on YouTube and watch it again. As well as the older meetings are also on YouTube. And we have one person that's uh, online that's unidentified. I'm not sure who that is, but if they talk, we can recognize sure. them. But otherwise, that's it. Uh, you, you and the okay. unknown, you and the unknown, and me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'll call the uh, Monday, May third meeting, special meeting of the Hyde Park Select Board to order. Um, well, welcome everybody that's here. Hopefully this is going to be a little, a, a quick one. Um, in terms of changes to the agenda, um, the fire department still hasn't looked at, uh, at, uh, at the changes. They haven't sent anything back to Ron either. So they said that they would contact us when they've, when they're, when they're ready and there goes, <laughs> oh, there goes the light again. Um, I, it's going to be pretty strange looking on YouTube as I'm sitting here periodically waving my arms over my head. Um, let's see. I think is that the major change that we need to make, Ron? Yeah, that's it. That was just a, a quick uh, request for deferral from Brad. Right. Oh, oh. Well, yeah, and you can give us a catch up on the on nine with the appraisals. Um, is there anything else that we need to add to it? Any public comments? Okay, then we can jump right down to uh, to reviewing the paving bids. Yeah, we uh, sent the uh, bid results uh, around, and I, uh, Brian was present for the opening. I don't know what what are you thinking, Brian? We had a um, a pretty good bid outcome. We had a lot of competitive bids yep it came out pretty good um is it backwards that's good so you can see who is what and what was what yep that was the price per ton and there was prices there was prices for the reclaim as well and then um what was the other portion of it uh, the deduct for double yellow yeah that's right for the double yellow lines was there a, was everybody able to do schedule wise in a good time i mean throughout the summer or did was that included by chance yeah part of the part of the bid package was to finish by uh, november okay Okay, so and you figured it up wrong for the tonnage, right? And eight hundred and some odd thousand. Yeah, the price, the total price is uh, two roads: Center Road, Sterling View, and the total cost ranged from one hundred and three thousand six thirty-five, which was Pike, to nine hundred and fifteen eight eighty-seven, which was Estes Haven. Uh, about a hundred and twelve thousand dollar spread. So I have a question, and this could have been discussed, and this may not even be something that could happen. But since I am a frequent flyer of Center Road, I have a personal interest in this. Is is Morseville going to pave their section of Center Road? Because that's in pretty rough shape. And if they know we're paving, would they be? interested in maybe looking into having whoever we hire do their section or is that something that you even how does that work i've tried to get that before chastity and that's never happened i tried okay. to get it together with the garfield road it never happened uh, and they got to do that intersection down there by trombley hill they're going to build that other road coming up by the bank and that right. was supposed to have been done two years ago that isn't done 
So I, I wouldn't even want to waste no time on talking about that with them. Oh, bummer. Okay. I, I wasn't it sure is it is a lot cheaper. You could get it a lot cheaper. Right. It, yeah. it, it, I don't know. Believe me, I've tried it before. Oh, okay. Bummer. Thank you. Well, go right up to Garfield Road and check that out. It's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Look at Marshall's site. Hey, Rolly, see me got a new town administrator in Marshall. Would it be would it be wise to have Ron give him a chat? True. Never know. You never know, but he hasn't, they haven't changed yet. <laughs> Dan's still there, so. When, when, when are they making when, the change, Rolly? Yeah, when does he change? When, at first, he's all done the first of July. Oh. But um, you never know, Dave, you can ask, but it's, it's probably too late now, but they're not going to be able to get that intersection done. And them culverts were rotten two years ago right there at the intersections right there by Trombley Hill. So I know they've got to change them. Yeah, of course, of course they've got to go through their budget process too, so. Right. right. Yeah. I think we're on board. We'll leave it on board the way we are. I, I, that's my opinion. Yeah, no, I think that, that makes, yeah. that certainly makes sense, Roly. So I guess, do we have a motion? Do we know what we want to do? Somebody want to make a motion? Well, it's been a long time. I guess we'll make a motion to let Pike do it. They're the lowest bid. Get it done. I guess I second that motion. Okay. Brian, you were there and talking with everybody. Does that make sense to you? Uh, Brian, I don't think I have it. Um, yeah, I don't think I have it. <laughs> uh, okay. you know, there's Brian. Here, somebody cut me off. Oh, well, they're okay. There you are. You get well. I don't know who it was, but uh, Brian, let me let me explain don't something. Do it again, Brian. <laughs> Brian. Um, Sometimes there's a, a ton of feedback coming back from various mics. So if you see your mic go off, we're getting a lot of feedback from your mic. So just make sure you check before you speak and unmute I'm yourself. A, I, I, I am aware of that. And mine was off until the disc came back on here. And uh, uh, so I, I'm not sure what's going on. So it's something other than that. I, I, usually, I usually do it to Dave, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is understandable. <laughs> <laughs> so. So Brian, there's a motion to accept the uh, the pike bid because you were there. Um, does that work for you? Got any more questions? Anything else we need to discuss about it? I don't think there's anything we need to discuss about it. Um, they were a great bunch of guys and uh, very uh, vested in hearing what the outcome of the bids were and stuff. So um, okay. yeah, so I think we should vote on it. And okay. In that case, Jesse, you got any more questions? Nope, I'm good, thank you. Oh, okay, then all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed, anybody abstaining? Okay, motion passes. <laughs> and now we go to the Union Bank paving loan. Funny how those things are tied together. Okay. Um, let's see, Allie, you sent the uh, the documents out. Do, 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 do. One, two. <laughs> this is really going to irritate me a lot, isn't it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> ask Kim how. Um, why, why don't you tell us the process and what you went through and what we need to know, Allie? Loser? Bobby did the same thing there they did to me. <laughs> Maybe I gotta go to help LA with this thing. <laughs> Can you hear me now? There you yeah. go. Okay. <laughs> yes. So um, Union Bank was the only one that came in with the lowest interest rate at 1.33 fixed rate. Um, the loan amount we estimated at 900,000. 
so it will be a little bit less. Um, the prin principal and interest will be due at maturity, um, which would be May 1st of 2022. Um, the documents that you guys will need to have a motion for someone to sign will be the note, the resolution, um, IRS yep. form 8038 GC, um, the tax certificate with schedule D and the registration record if the term exceeds one year, which at this point it shouldn't. So we shouldn't have to worry about that. And the signed acceptance letter of the proposed letter. Yep. Okay. Got the letter. Yeah. And then the copy of the select board minutes, which I'll take care of when those are done, and the most recent annual report, which I will send to her at the same time. Okay. Sounds good, Ellie. The interest rate sounded good. Yeah. Yeah. The other bank was 1.66, which wasn't too far off, but 1.33 was better, especially for the amount of the loan. And I say that Roland Bobin sign off on it, on the loan, and that way if we default, he's got plenty of money to cover it. Hey, I like it. There we go. <laughs> it's uh, when it that's, why the, that's why the chairman makes all the big money, Brian. <laughs> That's right. That's that's why I get so, the extra dollars, right? <laughs> I'm making sure that the chair is there. <laughs> it's, um, well, and just one of the things I noticed, too, that if, just depending, because I think really for us, it's just a, it's a cash flow issue, really, so that if we, there's no penalty for paying it early. Um, so, which is, I just think is always a good thing to, to, to be aware of. And it's, I, I think Ron and I were talking, you know, and, and the, and the paying this back is coming sort of from so many different pools. And, um, Mark is saying that, you know, we're getting, our roads are getting in pretty good shape and being able to do this, um, sort of stretching ourselves a little bit by giving us our, giving ourselves this cash flow issue. Um, we we may we may be slowly but surely appreciate approaching the point where instead of playing catch up we'll have the roads in pretty good shape and then we can just get to you know keeping everything in 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 good maintenance as opposed to having gigantic projects each year i know that's something everybody's talked about and be a great point to get to but this this uh financing it for a year like this kind of as a bridge may really help us finally get there. Um, so I guess what we need is a motion to do the loan and to, uh, and to uh, <laughs> give me the authority to sign the papers. So moved. Second. Okay, any more questions about it? Or Nice job, Allie, thanks for doing it. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody aye. opposed? Aye. Okay. And I guess, um, Allie, if you'll leave everything down here and just let me know when it's here, I'll stop at the town office and get up and sign stuff. Sounds good. I'll touch base with Tina in the morning to make sure she doesn't want to change the date, but I don't think she will. I think it'll be fine. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The vendor list. Did everyone find that on the town website? I confess, I didn't go and look for it. So I need, I need to go to the to the town website, Ali. Yeah, so it's on the um, finance page, and it should be yeah. like halfway down. Should say for twenty twenty one approved vendor list. Um, just for backup for you, Chastity, yep. um, before they're even added into that vendor list, um, I go through all the documentation, um, which requires any new vendor to have the most updated um, IRS W-9 form, which is, I believe, 10 of 2018. Yep. Um, 
uh, insurance of certificate showing um, general liability and workers' comp um, insurance as applicable. If they okay. don't have workers' comp, um, we are required to get a contract, which is signed between the vendor and us. Um, so that's kind of the backup to okay. that. With that, I don't add any vendor in the AP module unless I have all the required documentation. Got it. Just the backup for everybody. Okay. And we are also required to make sure that the um, general liability insurance certificates are up to date and that we have the most recent um, certificates for anyone's that could be expiring or expire. Okay, great. Thank you. Did anybody notice much of a change from last year? Nope, this stuff is is really pretty, um, obviously it's pretty routine and it's the, you know, the work falls to Allie to make sure that everybody's got all the right stuff and the, you know, the updated stuff, but okay. So uh, a motion to approve the vendor list. So moved. <clears throat> Okay, got any questions or concerns about it? All right, if not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Yeah, I'll abstain so because I didn't, simply because I didn't have the time to read it. Okay. Um, this is uh, next is we had talked about doing the, the six month pilot, the consulting services. And what initially was uh, was pushing that was a combination of the village finishing their water project and the sinkhole project going on at the same time. So there's gonna be so much going on this year, plus a, a fair amount of paving. Well, as you'll see down later, the sinkhole project has gotten um, has gotten stalled. They're in need of, I think, is it around five more easements? And the assessors are all so busy, you can't get anybody to do the assessment work. So I think that project that started in, God, when did that start, Ron? A long time ago. Uh, that was a two-part project. The village started that with the um, improvements to Depot Street sidewalk in 2005. Oh, yeah, okay. And, and a redesign of West Main Johnson Street extension intersection. They never got to Johnson Street extension, and then we overlapped that with the sinkhole project. So then the state merged those right. two. Merged them. Okay. So it's it, the project itself is is the same grant number from 2005 but spread out with that gap in between so gotcha okay so um and again talking with with mark and part of the idea with this uh with trying the consulting services a as a as a pilot is because right now and the money comes out of a variety of different pools because right now when we need some engineering work is you go to the sinkhole project or you go to this project and they send out their engineers at 90 bucks an hour. This was a way to have somebody locally and start to develop a relationship with them so that somebody at 50 bucks an hour um, and that was here and knows the knows the community. Um, I, I don't uh, I still I still think it's a good idea. In some ways, I guess I would, we can go ahead and try it, but I don't really think it's gonna be used this year. And maybe that's, a, maybe that's good. Maybe that's the best way to try something that's really new and different. I don't, um, I, I know we had a, um, had a, had a conversation about, and uh, Chastity is actually, it's worked with the person. Then we, we put it out to see if other people were interested and there were not other people that were interested in this sort of thing. So um, I'd say I just, for the, for the pleasure of the, of the rest of the board, what would we like to do? Uh, 
this is something that that Mark French and the crew really want. Is that my well? No, they we, we started talking about it, and again, it's it's because part of the issue ends up for Mark is you know in the in the busy season when he gets called to go check on something you know and they these big projects and they need somebody from the town to check so it mark goes to check there and here's another one and it looked way back a year anyway it looked as though we were going to have three major projects going on at the same time i'd say right now we've we've got the paving which is you know the Paving is really pretty straightforward. I, all the culverts and that stuff are all done. Um, and the, the sinkhole project is on hold. So the, the only, even though it's major, um, is the village doing the rest of the, of the water work. So Mark would get, will get pulled away from that, which is, again, depending on when he's needed and it's an issue, but it doesn't, um, there isn't the, the workload that, we initially were concerned was going to happen and just keep Mark so busy that then lots of the town work falls away because we we have such a small crew. So I think it's it's really pretty neutral. It's one of those it's not gonna I I think the there there one way or the other there really wouldn't be any difference in the budget because it gets the to pay for these services comes out of whatever big project is coming out of so it's not a it's not a bottom line issue it's all it's just access to a service if we don't use it we don't pay for it but he's there and we have an agreement in place if we do need him it's, it's exactly. kind of what we're doing now okay yeah. yeah well that's 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 what would that's what would happen now we do the okay. agreement here it is and if something comes up and mark can use it or i you know you can end up in a situation where um you know mark has something happens with the family and he has to be gone and we suddenly were really short staffed or something um to fill in those sorts of things we'd be paying we'd be paying somebody else or we if it's involved with any of these projects we'd be paying them at least 90 bucks an hour to do it so 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 for me i don't i uh i think it'd be interesting just to go ahead and pursue it and if we use it fine if we don't use it fine yep yep makes sense thank you for, for me trying something that doesn't cost us anything is like well okay i'm willing to do that and isn't isn't going to take anybody's time it's again it's sort of a resource there if mark wants to use it and then, and if he finds that it's helpful then we can do it another year and if he doesn't use it at all we can go well that was a good idea but we don't need to do it the other um thing i just want to point out with this topic in general is that the town does have relationships with inspection services so for example um, summit engineering uh, south burlington uh, watershed consulting out of south burlington those folks are the primary people doing the design work for things like prospect street culvert replacements uh, the analysis after the november 2019 flood where we had to figure out which of the 45 sites were undersized culverts. Uh, how do we design the center road culverts? What's the proper sizing on those? So we hired those folks to do that work, which is engineering work at you know $125, $150 an hour, whatever they charge. So that group is still there. They're still part of those grant projects. They're still there as part of ongoing projects. This was a lesser position of uh, where some of the work that we would call those folks for uh, wouldn't be called. We would call RLG services because like Susan was saying, Mark's not available or he's in the middle of a job and he would go out and do the basic inspections. Um, RLG cannot do the full inspections, which we'll still be calling uh, the professionals in, so to speak, that have the license. So it's, it's not like something totally new is just a different way to fill those inspection challenges that uh, do go up and down during the year. You know, right now we have no inspection services really needed. Uh, we do have some long-term planning, which we might want to use either engineers with or somebody like RLG that can sit with stuff. So 
anyway, that was I just want to let you know that we're not just we're not talking about engineering services necessarily. We're talking about inspection services. Uh, some towns do settle into one engineering company, and they actually call it the town engineer, and they develop a formal relationship with that person or that firm, and then that firm can also adjust their people that go out. So, for example, if we call a principal engineer at $150 an hour, the principal engineer would say, hey, wait a minute, you just need uh, somebody to sit there all day. I'll send uh, you know, a junior engineer for $65 an hour. Okay. You know, those are the kind of things that will save the town money if you're aware of that relationship. Right now, we don't have a big firm that we're working with, both Watershed and Summit are on the smaller sides, so they don't necessarily have enough staff to send lesser paid folks. Um, so that's something the town could think about, too, you, you, to develop a relationship with a larger firm that can provide you all the services right now we're, we're sort of constrained to the higher rates when we do call those folks in to, to work so what's the what's what's the pleasure of the board dave roley brian what do you what would you like to do Oh, come on, like. <laughs> yeah. I guess all you can do is try it and, and, and see if it's beneficial. And if it's not, relax it. Yeah, right. Because as I say, trying it doesn't it doesn't cost us anything to, you know, to at least do the contract. Then what we've just sort of got is, I uh, is somebody on call. In some ways, I see it's sort of the same thing as doing it on, you know, as a vendor. Yeah, um, and, and the only question I got, and, and just because I don't understand, is what is the scope of his work and what is his, his ability to the town? Can, can he can he stop a job or can he say, hey, listen, you guys ain't doing it right? Or he can't put a seal on it because he's not an engineer. Yeah, think think of it as a um a triage type person so you got something going on at a construction site you don't know what it is but the contractor just called kim i need somebody out here right now to tell me what to do and mark's you know below grade somewhere setting a culvert uh kim would probably call me if she couldn't get a hold of mark and then we would have that body that goes out just to look and say okay uh we got a problem here we need to get someone engineering in here right away would be one option or I need to get Mark out of that hole and stop that project over the phone with Mark. I don't. I don't. I want the consultant making a stop work project. Right. That should be left right. with Mark French. But Mark may not need to leave the site to go check it out, which would stop his work. That's, that's kind of the best scenario I could come up with, where it's Mark can just take a phone call, say, "Yep, nope, yep," and then and then figure it out. But if you can't get eyes on some of the projects quickly, sometimes that's a, more of a problem. Or, or Mark has to shut the project down that he's working on when he really didn't have to. <clears throat> Brian Rowley, what do you think? Want to give it a try? I, uh, my, my opinion is that I'm still the same as I was before. Um, the one the price per hour i know it's coming out of the thing but it's still coming out of somebody's pocket the money's being paid somewhere it's not free i i i learned that meaning a long time ago about free and uh i don't uh, uh i don't necessarily go along with it myself and then the 50 dollars an hour um and there's no structure there's no structure in the whole thing um uh other than just it, the person being called out when they're needed and so then um, um, Mark is being pulled away anyways to make a call to go check on this project or, or telling Ron and then Ron tells him and uh, uh, that whole time could have been taken up if Ron was in uh, Hyde Park, he could have ran over and looked at it possibly, I don't know. And, and it's just like the scenario like Ron's saying, it, there's a lot of uh, uh, misnomers about the whole thing about what's gonna happen. And it may work, it may not, but uh, um, I think that I'd like to see somebody with uh, a little more knowledge um, myself. That's my that's my opinion on it. 
Yeah, I think I think that's a good point. I think having having a local town engineer that is working closely with Mark all summer long would be more ideal because they can sign off on projects and you know maybe amend a design potentially even on site. Uh, if if the way to address your the pilot period is regular reporting of what's going on. So I, I'm either going to do weekly or monthly reporting to the select board about what how this is being used. So I want you all of you to be sort of engaged with what's going on and not be surprised in November that you had a twenty thousand dollar bill. You know, we'll we'll keep information flowing between if anything's happening, or I'll just say, hey, nothing happened in the last couple of weeks. We're not using that position. I I go along with it. If it was a written summary presented before the select board, before the, the meeting of the select board, so it can be reviewed ahead of time of uh, like a diary of what took place and the expenditure. That's what I, I'd go along with it then. So every every two weeks, like on that kind of a schedule. That's what I'd like. And that way we can we can stay on top of it if uh, if we see there's something that uh, we don't want or if we like it then all the better. But what, wasn't there a five thousand dollar cap on this? Uh, no cap. It was just an estimated five thousand with uh, with both of those projects running. The sinkhole project is going to be sliding away. I think getting away from so right. five thousand was a budget number that we had picked. Yeah. Well, well, I I, I would want a, a a cap on it so it does not get out of hand and i i think at five five thousand dollars is a good start yeah and if it starts to get close then we'll then we have the conversation if it's worth it or not that's well, right. we have the convers we have the conversation anyways because every two weeks we're going to have a report right. and, right. and we'll have to do it. okay we can, we can do those things uh okay so we have a have a motion sort of with those with those adjustments to it to uh to uh to put the cap and have the have the two weeks um report back to to us I like prior, to pr yeah. prior to the select board meeting um so it can be reviewed right yep right right and and even if we again right now we're doing we're which i should add to that we're we're meeting every two weeks but um to have it reported into ron anyway if we go back to then through the summer just doing the monthly i want to make sure that the two weeks is checked anyway so if ron sees something he can say whoa hey we can always do a phone call yeah no the two, the two weeks is good i'll just put it on our whether you meet or not, I'll keep to the same schedule for this report. Okay. Oh. Okay, so can we have a, uh, a motion to give this pilot a try with those adjustments with a $5,000 cap and an every two week report into Ron that he passes on to us and we'll see what happens. Need a motion? I'll make the motion. Okay. <laughs> with all the with the adjustments that we right for the appropriate adjustments. Got it. Okay. Do you have a second? I'll second it since I put that stipulation in there. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, anybody opposed? I am. No. Okay. Uh, anybody abstaining? Okay. We'll we'll give it a try and see what happens. Um. Next is the uh, is the art installation project. Ron, you want to get us caught up on that? Yes. So the steering committee has been meeting with Dan Gottsigan, who is, uh, or Gottsigan, I think his name is pr pronounced properly. Uh, Dan has been working with the group to try to 
get some conceptual drawings done for a Vermont Arts Council funded grant um, project, which will involve some art installation or design for art installation at the trailhead on Depot Street Extension. Then that work is um, needing a work contract with Dan so he can move to design. And when the design is done, uh, after some public input and some research he's going to be doing, then the select board will uh, select the, the final work uh, to be moved to another project, which is installation. That That is a separate project, not part of this design work. So the contract for services with Dan would uh, uh, pay him based on steps in the process. There's three steps and each step has a payment to him. Um, at the end of the project, uh, there's gonna be a need for some community support, funding support, maybe another grant. Uh, the installation is estimated to cost 40,000, and that's in addition to the 5,000 for the design, which the Vermont Arts Council is paying for the, um, there's no town match. I should say there's no there's no town match in the first part of this design select board's responsible for the contract and the final selection the steering committee is working with uh, dan to get the community engagement piece done so that's part of the contract too that the school's engaged the north north village hopefully is engaged uh, the senior uh, sterling view uh, co-op folks are engaged and at the end there's a it's going to be interesting he's got some good examples that he's already done in south burlington and i think i still have some examples of his artwork on the home page of the town website but anyway you can you can eat uh, sorry search him at dan gots again d-a-n-g-o-t-t-s-e-g-e-n.com and that's all i got yeah i think it um i think it's a lot of fun there's obviously there's there's definitely being lots of interest around town and through the schools with it so it's um uh, um it's a it's a great project we'll get it designed and then a couple of people in town have already said that they'd help fundraise for it so we'll see what we can do um what do we oh let's see we need to since it goes through the town you need a motion i'm i'm obviously happy to sign it and have been working with them yeah and i think it's it's a it's a fun project so what do we need ron a motion for me to be able to sign and again this is this is good because it's not uh it's a it's a fun project for the community and it's not costing taxpayers uh dollars we got the first grant yeah. and and we'll we'll take it from there <laughs> yeah you you'll need to have a motion to sign the uh, contract with dan and authorize susan to sign it and the, the contracts is a long contract that Vermont Arts Council has yeah, set up right. for other projects. And am I understanding this right that any money, out of pocket money, will be raised by by people get donations? It will not come back to the taxpayers. Correct. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> it's always through the taxpayers dave <laughs> the project used by so little paid by so many yeah that's this is a i think it's probably a federal grant that came out of uh everybody's pocketbook at one time yeah you know, funneled through the vermont arts council back to you your community Right, we're we're uh, we're lucky to have uh, 
Michelle Bailey in town because she's on the she she works for them so she's been very helpful in getting through all the technical things that you need to go through as Ron knows and most of you know applying for grants these days is a major you understand why most nonprofits need to hire somebody who just specializes in writing grants are getting more and more complicated but so just uh, somebody make a motion Sure, so moved. For Susan, sure. you work with them, right? That's pretty much what we're, what yep. we're moving on. Okay, perfect. Yep. Long, long as we don't have all this and I don't take the $900,000 from the Union Bank and skip town, we're in good shape. <laughs> got a second? Ryan got it. Oh, okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> we got anybody opposed? Okay. Anybody abstaining? Okay. Um, Ron, the con, oh boy, the town for, for the, um, talk, talk about the assessor services. I knew that light was going to be yep. again. Yep. So as you know, the, the Hyde Park Board of Listers is down to one out of three folks, which technically means there's no Board of Listers. When that happens, the state law says that the select board, uh, it doesn't say, I don't know if it says shall, but I think it's more like you got to do something. And the only option that you're have in front of you is the town assessor. So the town assessor is a different position than a board of listers. The board of listers is elected from the uh, checklist. They run all the state statutory requirements and meet all the deadlines of the grand list maintenance every year, including grievance hearings, which come up in June. Uh, a town assessor does all those things as one person for the town under a contract. So you're required to have the grand list maintained. And the only way you can do that is to basically hire it, hire it out at this point. We've searched for listers. We've searched for assessors. I've talked to the neighboring towns and a lot of places are in the same boat with very limited skilled people to do the statutory requirements and the methods that the state of Vermont has set out. The state of Vermont is trying to hire people to do the same thing for the property valuation and review. And then the contractors in Vermont, which there's a handful of them, if you if you have employees as a contractor, some of those employees are getting hired by the state of Vermont. So the towns themselves are really left at the at the end of that skill chain. So talk to town of Johnson, who's facing the same thing this summer, and we're thinking about uh, creating a town assessor uh, county level type position where multiple towns would join in. We've got about a day's worth of work for our assessor needs. That's not quite enough for an employee that needs to support a household. But possibly if we join a few towns and get a decent wage up there, uh, we would avoid having a long term contract with Nemric. The, the in-between deal is really a NEMRIC contract through town meeting day 22, 2022, uh, just to continue to meet our statutory responsibilities. While Julie Rowletter is here right now, she would assist in the work as long as she's able to. Uh, she's hoping to move sometime soon. While she's still here, she can help get the work done. When she's gone, we'll have to lean pretty heavily on Nemric. So this contract is sort of a two-part deal. Nemric's already under, under contract with the town to help with assessments. And we've done that for a number of years. They said that without this contract, they would help us if Julie leaves to carry on with our statutory duties through the end of June. Starting July 1, this contract would would kick in and that would be in place while we try to try, try to establish a formal long-term plan 
The formal long-term plan requires voter approval at town meeting day to officially uh, transition from the elected board of listers to a hired town assessor. The, under state law, the voters actually have to do that and they have to have a vote. So until then, it's sort of an interim plan, if you will. So under state law, we, we can do the interim town assessor to make sure that we're complying with the grand list requirements. But then in March, we have to ask the voters to make it official that we're no longer going to look for three board of lister members. We're going to, the select board's going to hire it out every, you know, whatever the term of the contract is. So that's where we are. I don't know of any other options right now other than NEMRIC, but I do want the board to uh, consider or just think about developing this county position so that the towns would have direct control over an employee and share those costs. Um, hopefully, you know, the contractor price that I got today from NEMRIC was $95 an hour which is $10 an hour more than their last estimate from two years ago. And as far as I know, they're able to get that price because the, the market really doesn't support <laughs> lowering that price. The only way the towns can lower the price, and that's probably, you know, we pay $20 an hour now, uh, is probably the 20 or $30 an hour range. And then you're talking about benefits. So it could be a $100,000 position on the upper end with multiple towns sharing that time of a full-time person. So those are, are those are all the various things going on. The first part is no no board of listers. The second part is Nemric coming in to help. Julie is helping now. She might be leaving. And then the voters having say uh, in March about making it a, a formal permanent transition to a town assessor. And, and being done. a lot of towns are doing this. It's not something new. It's just it's almost like a a reflection of society to a certain degree, and part of it driven by government mandates that we have to meet, and people not able to do what they did even ten years ago, which was almost anybody could run for lister and and follow the instruction manual and get it done. Um, and it worked for years, a long time, going back to the very beginning almost where local folks were able to handle the the grand list requirements and now it's it's just different it's more software it's more annual updates it's more deadlines it's more responsibility and that's sort of outgrown its uh sort of grassroots original idea to more of a contracted contracted or bigger job if you want to call it you know a bigger job being a full-time job with the multiple towns having a skilled person to do the work so we're, that's we're in transition is a summary but with, without this contract we don't have an option to meet our grand list requirements so we sort of need to move forward with nemeric in the interim have we always had a problem finding listers ron i know i was a lister 100 oh my god probably 20 years ago and i think it was a problem back then i feel like yeah it's, it was hard it was hard finding three listers that all wanted to do all of the work so you might find a lister that just wanted to do the house inspection you might want to found a lister that wanted to do the computer work or somebody that just wanted to come in and sign things you know and for as long as i've been in hyde park going on 10 years it's been julie Rowletter yeah. being, being the one person doing it when she was elected and then she stepped down from elected and the town appointed her as an employee to do the same work. We really haven't had three listers sharing things equally, I guess. And she was a lister when I was a lister. So she's been a lister for a long time. Yeah. So it, <laughs> when we when we ask for help or want to get somebody into it, you really got to be prepared for training and getting not, you don't have to be certified at this point, but you need a lot of training to get to the deadlines and the way things are entered into the different software programs and just less interest in doing that at a you know four hours or less a week. What what were we paying uh, Julie? Twenty dollars. Twenty. How many? I mean, per year. You're giving her eight thousand. Well, she's got six thousand in the budget. Uh, but you know the weekly varies. So I think we budget five or six thousand for for lister salary. 
Yeah, now, now, if we could join some other towns, and because you're saying a lister could do this in eight hours a week, one full day per week, times 52. You know, we're, we're looking at the, the, uh, the town, Hyde Park would be, uh, you know, 12,480. If we can get the other, but she could fill up five weeks with that same amount of money, you know, uh, 62,400 without benefits. So you're not talking a lot more money by doing that and you are paying Julie. Well, except you can't get anybody for 20 bucks an hour. I said 30 bucks an hour. Oh, okay. You go to, yeah, that, I think that's the hope that we could, by creating one decent, one good job, we could get somebody. Because I figured $30 an hour times eight hours is pretty close to 240. So, Ron, again, um, can you explain what uh, what's going on between the uh, other towns that uh, you're trying to find someone to... Uh, to do it and then divide it up between the towns and what's what's being done is it going to be something posted in the paper is there yeah. uh, uh yes. have we just did we decided a uh a price form if you post that or uh or a variance between certain amount to a certain amount uh, uh maybe that would draw somebody in yeah i think that's i think that's right the the point we're at now is just talking about the concept because it, like I said the history has been every town sort of fends for themselves and they try to get listers from their checklist uh, Morristown uses a hybrid they have an employee and a contracted assessor uh, Johnson is under contract now I believe with an assessor to help their people but the contract is going up quite a bit uh, starting July 1 so they want to try to bring it inside to save some money there so that's if you can get into that $30 an hour range uh, with benefits, you know, your interest level will go up. It's still you still have to figure out how to share the hundred thousand dollars a year. So it'd be better with three towns, maybe or four towns. Uh, if you're up in benefits, you can. And like I said, I, it's all the same work. It's a state software. It's you know, everything is the same because the state mandates it on every town. So it's not like you're going to have different systems. And that's why it seems like it would work with them. Hey, Ron. Yeah. The, the, another avenue to t take that as, as per town is uh, hire this person as a private contractor. That, then the, the town should give them a fair wage and not worry about insurances and everything that goes with it. I, that's true to a certain point. The, the, contractor nemric is at 95 if you called up a like a single person that's doing it out of their house maybe they're 75 but they are they're still responsible for all their insurances so you can't get down to the 30 dollars an hour contract person but you can take bids out and try to get 95 down uh hopefully with an independent person versus a firm that's the same mm -hmm. discussion we had with the engineer you know, the firm costs are higher because they they have carrying costs. The independent contractor is going to still has to cover their insurance. So they're not going to be down at the 20 to $30 an hour range. But you can get some, you know, based on their time available, you might be able to get them to commit. Uh, like I think Morristown does that now. I don't know what their rate is. But yeah, when you're looking at $95 an hour, when you're used to $20 an hour, you, you start scratching your head. So we got to, got to, Something better. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think, and again, that's just sort of Ron. Ron will keep us appraised as he as he talks with other towns, and it's this is uh, this is is the long term project that we have to get into and have some kind of resolution, because obviously the way it's going, we're going to need to take something to the voters next town meeting. Um, next uh, personnel policy amendments, Ron. Uh, do you? What do you? So I got to back up to the contract uh, with Nemrec for the interim oh, plan. Yeah. Okay, yep. Uh, we we do have grievances coming up every year, every June. Those notices yep. 
I think Julie is trying to get those out before she leaves, but then somebody has to go to those hearings. Uh, Matt Reed, who is your only elected lister, can't participate in the grievances because he's not part of a board of listers. So the select board really is being forced a little bit here. I don't like feeling like that, but I think you're being forced in order to keep on your grand list schedule to have Nemrick hired for as a town assessor, which is your right under the state law because you're one out of three members on the board of listers. And they would start doing the board of listers duties, including the grievance hearings with Julie, if she's still here. I talked to Matt Reed today and he said, if he's not really a lister at this point, he would be willing to be an appointed assistant assessor uh, to be like the local contact for the grievance hearings and working with the contracted town assessor. So he's agreeable to help us through this transition phase uh, as a helper person that's interested in helping the town, even though he, he can't commit to long term or a lot of work, he can still help us as a as a high right, park rep. Right. Okay. So the, the motion would be to approve the contract with Nemrick for town assessor. Uh, <laughs> uh responsibilities as outlined in their contract and as, as just as a side point um matt matt reed would be uh a point after that matt reed would be appointed assistant to the contracted town assessor <laughs> i just i'm trying to give him a title so that he you know we know he's authorized to act on the half of the half of the town he's already got 14 dollars an hour as his pay rate under lister job duty and he wasn't he wasn't concerned about that rate as much, but he did want to know what his position would be if he's not a lister. What is he? he right. He, what he is really? He? he really would be a, an assistant to the town assessor. That's what that would be his new title. So that's a second motion that would follow the first one. First one, you're hiring the town assessor under contract with Nemrick. The second one is appointing Matt Reed as assistant to the town assessor. Okay, everybody, who's who's my motion maker here? I'll make it. <laughs> I'll make the motion to approve the contract with Nemrick and to are we just giving Matt that that title? He's he's agreeing to it. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's totally. I don't want to hire him and then have him call me and say thanks for thanks for hiring me without. Oh no, he was very it was very happy to help the the transition today when I talked to him. That's so great. I don't I don't That's think great. he'll change his yeah. He, he does have time constraints and all that business and his personal business and he's i think he's going away for a couple of weeks with the guard those kind of things so he's it's conditionally offered to help with those conditions well anyone that agrees to help we need to take them so yes <laughs> there, you, there you go it's um okay got a second for those two motions <laughs> hey Somebody wake up out there. <laughs> Ron, have you muted everybody? No, I haven't touched it for a while. <laughs> Everybody's been good. Yeah. Okay, who wants to second the motions? Hell, I'll second them. It's all right for me to second them, isn't it, Ron? Oops. Okay. Um, all in favor of, I will do the motion separately. One to do the contract with uh, Nimric as the town to provide the town assessor services. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Our region is reopened. Now is your time to get a great deal. Okay, Ron, are you hearing anybody? Well, Green Mountain. Uh... Okay, so I'm unmuted. <laughs> Susan's talking. I, don't, I I think we have a motion from Chastity to approve the Nemrick contract for town assessor services. 
Yeah. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh -oh. I'm not hearing anybody else. Are they there? They're there. I think they're I'm guessing listening. they don't agree with it. No one's saying anything. You can say so we don't have a choice, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't have a choice. You're voting against or you're abstaining again. What's that, Dave? What do you want to do? I want to break it down into two. Uh, two uh separate votes one for nemrick and one for the change for for uh Mike. That, that's what we're doing and this is on this is on the nemrick contract this, this one's only on nemrick this this yeah. motion okay so all in favor of the nemrick contract say aye aye aye, aye. Okay, who's opposed? Who's abstaining? Aye. 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 There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, then the second motion is um, uh, with Matt and he's you don't what? you don't you don't need it if you don't have a town assessor. So who's stepping up to help? What are we going to do if this doesn't go through? This yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Matt Matt said he's willing to help, but he wanted to know what his role would be. And I said, well, if the network contract goes through, you would be assistant to the town contracted assessor. So if the contract doesn't get approved, then Julie's here until she's not. And, you know, we continue operating like that until there's a until there's nobody there that can do the work then we would fall behind on the grand list compliance and miss our deadline which i think is june 20th <laughs> i think june yeah. 20th or so is I the would... deadline to submit the grand list and I, I don't know what the penalties are for that but i'm pretty sure there's some penalties if we don't comply just i've never never had to think about the what ifs if we don't comply because julie's already done it <laughs> right well and and uh well and and we don't we don't have anyone to do the the meetings for the grievance and i know that julie is like she's as soon as the house is closed they're out of here so that's coming up very shortly yeah. so gentlemen what do you propose that we do if you're opposed to the contract Come on, guys! You can't just say no. Yeah, come on. What's, what's going on here? Come on! Are you are you muted? Are you what's happening? Come on! They they just abs three abstain, so now you have to have a new motion or somebody or or you will no, have a. Table. No, I don't. I don't need. I need a conversation about what they want to do. The town is going to be out of compliance. Um, we won't get things done. We'll fall behind on the grand list. There may be penalties. We have no one to do the grievances. And so if they don't want to do this, what do they want to do? They need to give us a solution. No, nobody's told us what the cost is yet on them, Rick. I'm not going to vote. I'm going to, not going to vote on anything. I don't know what the cost is. And it's the only option that uh, I'm hearing. I think there's probably some more out there, possibly. Okay, well, we have what tried do you think they are? We've placed ads. We've done everything. We've been talking about this for three months. Okay, but so at what what cost is Nemrick going to charge the town? Ninety five dollars an hour, but we we have to we have to go in there not knowing the price because we don't know how many grievances we're going to get. Yeah, does that suck? Sure, but we don't have a choice. It's better I mean, to be out of compliance and getting penalties, but we don't know what they're going to cost the town. I, I think Dave. Yeah, I think Dave's question is is good. It puts the town in a very uncomfortable position. To have. You know, deadlines coming up without an answer. Roland, I'm going to mute you for a second just to get feedback. Um, so, the immediate plan, which is to hopefully Julie can get us through this or Matt can get us through this, is to 
not have a contract with Nemric, continue to work with Nemric on the the interim plan, because that's a, your only interim plan. You're not making a permanent plan. You're trying to get interim plan to get compliance with the grand list for the year that closes in you know six weeks, basically. So right. Julie's able to help us to a certain point, and then we're going to need other help to get the rest of that work done. Um, and Nimric doing that is at 85 bucks an hour, right? Well, it's the 95 is the new contract I just got today. Yeah. Okay, so they're at 95 bucks an hour, and Julie does four or five hours a week. Yeah, she's about five now. She's yeah. Okay, yep. and and for everyone to remember, if we if we fall behind on this and it's not up to date, we can't send out tax bills. Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a linear path of deadlines. So the, the right. The better. But I mean, just understand that that you you start falling behind on this, and then we can't send out tax bills, so that whole system gets screwed up. We don't have the money coming in; that all falls behind. So it's it, it's well, a fairly be, significant uh, yeah, the issue. Worst, yeah, the the worst case scenario is that there's penalties from the state for non-compliance, but there's also a bill that has to be paid to the school on time. There's no delay for that bill. So when that bill comes in, we have to pay it, whether we have money or not. That's the worst case scenario. The other, the other issue is the the fact that you know Dave has raised that we don't know the cost. So the only way I could think of getting some comfort there is to do sort of what we did with the pilot project, which is let's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it over. Thank you. You know, let's let's talk about the Nemric yeah. uh, arrangement as yeah. something like we did with the pilot project, where the board is really involved with better estimate for cost, where they're headed, what they think, and we, we keep that sort of cap that Dave was talking about in place. So, you know, let's set the cap at uh, $5,000 again on NEMRIC services and, and make sure the board is in communication with how things are going, because it is a, it's uncomfortable for everybody. Um, uh, but I we are, resp we are responsible. So. Lifeline's going off and Bill's not responding. Can you go check in, please? Yeah, thanks. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> just a moment. I'm having an emergency at home. Yep. That's down, fine. not responding. Okay. Just called the neighbor. Yes. Okay. A little more pressing than the appraisal, but not much. <laughs> yeah. No, I was just suggesting that uh, we take Dave's capping yeah. idea from the yeah. pilot study and use it for NEMRIC. And, okay. and as we go through this transition, we keep the board in the loop. You know, on a, on, a, on a weekly basis, okay. I'll just keep the board in the loop. Can we, can we advertise again for $30 an hour? See what that brings us? Yeah, I mean, it, you, can, you can advertise at 30 and see what happens. Um, I'm just concerned that there's overlap of those deadlines coming up. Okay. With the list deadline. So there's there's going to be a need to balance all this stuff with meeting those deadlines, ideally. So we can do that and sign the contract with Nemric. They, they did say that they were very flexible with our needs. So if we come up with a better solution, they'll back off. This isn't a long-term, you know, Nemric is the only answer. I think if we come up with better ideas to meet our needs, we can do that. We're just trying to get Nemric settled so they are, you know, knowing that they potentially will be the town assessor July 1st. They won't take other jobs and say no to us if, if there are no other options. But we can we can get out of Nemric any time. You, you're not comfortable with the cost. No, no. With that being said, Ron, uh, that's what I was looking for. I, I wasn't against going to Nemric at this time. Well, we can still be looking for the right person for the job down the road. But I want to paint your house, but I don't know how much it's going to cost. I don't know how much longer it's going to take me. But I'll give you the bill when it's done. Yeah, I, no, I, I don't go for that. Yeah, well, that's it's hard. It's unknown to a certain degree. So let's say we hire somebody at 30 that knows half as much as Julie. You know, we're going to have training costs on top of work costs and possibly hiring Nemric to meet the deadline. So it's it's not it's not a situation where we can say if we go this path, we're going to have this answer. I think we need to we need to keep communication open and explore the cheapest option for taxpayers and if that means $35 an hour, or if that means getting lucky and finding somebody that is ready to go fully trained at 30, 
uh, we don't need the NEMRIC contract at that point because they'll be the they'll be the workhorse, and we'll keep the five thousand dollar contract with NEMRIC for assistance, which we've had for a number of years. But we won't be getting the ninety five dollars an hour bill because we'll have we'll be able to hire somebody with other towns potentially, or just for Hyde Park. I know Johnson wants to make seems to make the want to make the move in the near future as well. So we we could have a partner in a you know multi town one pretty quick. We just don't have it today to talk about. So that being said, Chastity, can we bring her motion back up or she has to do a new one? Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I think that if if the if the motion is is to approve the contract with the condition that we continue to look work work for other options. <laughs> you know, we don't I don't I don't I want the town to be committed to that potential option of an employee too with the multi-town so you could almost have that as a combo for peace of mind that we're not just signing up with nemric we're also looking for the best option with potentially a multi-town person i thought that was already given but so i can definitely add it to the motion but i thought that was the plan going to the ta next tax period looking to go with another town and then potentially bring it to taxpayers and and still advertise for thirty dollars an hour and see what that will bring us well we yeah, don't we do. like, oh, we've been doing that for three months and every meeting everybody knows somebody that they're going to bring on board to be a lister but nobody's i did talk to i did talk to one guy and he said the same thing <laughs> I mean, and he else? was a lister he was a lister for 20 years nobody wants to do it because there's so many mandates every six months they're changing so, so do you want me to change it to be going in with Nemric with a cap of five grand, but full of keeping the board abreast of what they're spending and what they're doing going forward? Sounds good to me now. We want, and we're going to obviously research other options as well. Um, right, right. Well, future. you are, let me see. Nice. So I'll second that one. Okay. Should we? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just. Oh man. Wait for the phone call to come back. Okay. You okay, so? Uh. Well, I'm just now waiting. I think Beth can get him up, and it doesn't sound as though it's serious. So okay. You know, if you've got to go. Uh... Yeah, just just a little real life drama jumping in there for us all. Um, okay, let's. Yay. So, um, all in favor of the of, of the this amendment now with the five thousand dollar cap and as again we keep looking to come up with a, uh, a permanent solution that other than Nimric um, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay, now then the second one is uh, we got to give Matt his title, right? I lost yeah. everybody. There you uh, go. Uh, the, the, uh, the the contract will allow us to move forward with with Matt helping out, with Julie helping out as long as she can, while we're continuing to look for better options. <laughs> so it's 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 good, and Matt Matt will have a role, whereas right now he technically doesn't. So that would be good for him to know that he's the assistant to the contracted uh, town assessor. Okay. Now, do we go to the personnel policy amendments? But do you, did you want to take a motion on that for Matt? Or? Well, that's what I asked you. I keep and I know I keep losing, but keep suddenly not hearing anybody, and so and I don't I don't know if that's a problem at this end. Oh, there go the lights again. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> this, this, I'll tell you, you look at this on YouTube, it's going to be hysterical because periodically it's like the lights go out and I'm waving my arms, I'm rolling around. It's like, okay, she's finally oh. lost her mind completely. 
Uh, we, can hear, okay. we can hear you fine. So I just I was okay. asking about whether the, the Matt would be appointed as assistant to the town assessor. Right. Do you need a motion on that? So yeah. moved. Okay. Um, got a second? Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. That's all good. Okay, now the personnel policies. Ron, what's up? What do we need with this? Uh, it's a quick, quick one. Uh, we have the appraisal services for the sinkhole project. Um, that was above this one on, on the agenda list. Yep. And that is a um, deferred for May 17, still working with an appraisal firm that can do assessments of value for five easements on that stormwater improvement project so maybe on the 17th we'll have a quote for you on those services on the personnel policy i uh, just wanted the board to have received the september 2016 version which is the current policy and to start walking through that to see if you see any areas that you want to talk about revisit amend delete add or whatever so that we can have a good list at the may 17 meeting so i have a list going i've been taking notes since the last adoption so i have a list of you know 15 different topics that have come up in discussion or new state laws or whatever that need to be updated now uh, the town attorney probably will be asked to take a look at it at some point because there's some state laws that are uh, employee rights that we need to be careful of that we're not uh, changing or modifying so that we're in trouble with employees and their rights under state law. So I don't know, I don't know if that's enough for you to get going on it, you know, just to take that version and make notes on what pages you think the full board should talk about, and then we'll add it to one big list. And then at some point, uh, when we have the big list, it would be good to have uh, one member, yeah, I guess one member of the board to work with on the list because each topic is going to have different options of which ways to go and it, it's really uh not stressful but um long and monotonous kind of work to read every word and figure out what it means and how it can be changed and what the options are come up with a strike version that is good to go to the full board and then the full board debates the strike version so that the full board isn't doing all the research on on options and trying to get those strike versions together so that's the i don't know if that's a good approach if that's something you guys want to do it that way yeah. sounds like a good job for the new person <laughs> thanks rolly <laughs> um let's see could Did you, you take that you on volunteer for that? is that what uh, i heard Taz? Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I am pretty. I am pretty involved with teacher negotiation stuff, so I am pretty used to that kind of stuff. But well, oh, um, actually, that's probably that. I'm sure that would be helpful in looking at uh, again your the policy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you've got the job. That that's right. If you're willing to work with Ron, that's uh, that would that would be great. Thank you. So the, the only homework assignment is for the other board members to kind of flip through each page, look at some things that you question, why are we doing that? Or when did we start doing that? All those kind of questions you might have, or I heard this town's doing this now, or you know, all those kind of things that you might get when you're reading it, and then take a note about the page number and the topic. Uh, maybe bring a suggestion for what you wanna see the town employees subject to, um, or just a question and just say hey can we talk about this sometime i need we need to revisit this thing we're giving out too many holidays or whatever the comment is and then we'll we'll bring it to another policy type session so we can you know basically walk through a list and decide what makes it to a new um, amendment has it it really hasn't been updated since six, 2016. yeah so it was updated twice in 16 and what's happened is a select board will hear an issue have a vote and it, say you know to be incorporated into the policy someday gotcha. and it never, get, never comes off the shelf for a full amendment but i do have notes on those things so 
get it. And then the state laws change a couple of times, especially with family leave, medical okay. leave, those kind okay. of things have changed a lot Thank in the last you. couple of years. <laughs> okay, yeah, bye. Okay. Sorry. Well, when, with, with, with that policy, when, uh, when Cassie said it hasn't been done since 2016, uh, I think with them, uh, some of the employees joining the union, I think some of it supersedes some of our policies. So I think when you get through that, you're going to have to look at both of them and see what you can do, what you can't do. Yeah, I think it's it's good to have them side by side. You know, like uh, for example, we have no benefit for wintertime stipends for non-union employees. So we we give the nine hundred, we give nine hundred to the union employees, and everybody else is lucky to be working. You know, I would, you know, so you get those. You know, that's not a huge disparity, but it's a fact of not everybody's getting the same deal in the same department which every union shop has the differences between union and non-union. So I'm not saying it's good or bad, but it's good to see the differences when you're looking at the two policies like Dave's talking about. You know, what does the contract provide versus what does the policy uh, provide? But then again, we're lucky to get somebody part-time in the wintertime, stuff like that. Oh yeah, no, appreciation goes a long way for sure. Ron, how does that work with the union negotiations coming up? Just for my reference, I was just curious when we update our personnel policy, are we required to add that back in? The, po the, the yeah, the policy is a standalone. We can't adopt, we can adopt whatever we want in the policy, but if there's a conflict or difference, the union rules, the, the union interpretation of that topic rules. So if we say the town policy says everybody gets five holidays, but the union contract says 12, those people get 12 and non-union get five. Okay, thank you, just for my reference. Have, yeah, we could try they, to remember they, the contract. They don't, rule, they don't rule, it supersedes. Yeah, so, so the highway guys would get the 12 and the select board's option is to try to renegotiate the 12 to five through negotiation. Okay. So that's that, and so I'll, just, I'll I'll put a note on the seventeenth agenda to collect all your all your notes. Yeah. Okay. So Chastity and I can have a, a complete list to start with. Okay. Um, and this here we we'll see we have we have homework for the seventeenth because the uh, eleven the the ARPA funding money and the Harvey loan. Uh, payoff is uh, is <laughs> to come up with a list of uh, of um, possible expenditures of the money. It's Ron. What's the what's sort of the framework of the ARPA money? Uh, the federal government has set out priorities for the use of that fund, which is really anything that uh, COVID related, whether it's paying back i think even people that had, you know had uh, essential worker pay potentially is in there uh, lost revenue from oh let's say the opera house lost fifty thousand dollars because they weren't able to hold plays they have a oh. separate fund coming to them to try to recover i think it's called like public event losses or something like that which isn't it isn't the same money but the as we're getting but it's the idea that any negative impacts on cash flow uh, that the town might see, which we didn't see a lot, actually, the, the property taxes actually increased in payment. So we had less delinquencies during COVID than we had in prior years. Uh, we would have strings attached that are coming to us. So the first payment is supposed to be 50% of the 300,000 in June, and that will come with US Treasury conditions and priorities based on what Congress did. So infrastructure, broadband, uh, Wi-Fi connections for people that need telemed or, or teleschool or any of that kind of stuff, any, anything that helps people operate uh, digitally, I think would be covered. And infrastructure is discouraged a little bit because the feds are coming up with an infrastructure bill. 
and they might discourage major projects from being used for this money uh, in lieu of the new infrastructure bill. But those are all the things that the, and we've heard that the strings are supposed to be pretty pretty low, like, it's like not zero, but pretty low on the strings attached so that we can come up with projects that we feel are necessary for the town to move forward and recover and use that money for that. So I can't give you all the details of strings yet because nobody's provided them yet. Right, but but things like the ventilation system up at the garage, the ventilation system in the town office. Yep, all those. Right. Those, those are sort of health improvements that would, you know, we get hit with something else, we'll be in better shape to not have to make everybody stay out of the building. Yeah, like what about the library and helping them be able to have be opened and like doing like maybe plexiglass areas in there or something? Is that something that can be covered? Stuff oh, yeah, like I think, that? yeah, I think the library again would probably come under it's, it's the same, it's the ventilation kind of a system that they need, you know, that they're that going forward that they're concerned about. Gotcha. Yeah, but just sort of just everybody start thinking about those sorts of things. I st I started thinking about them, and I spent a million and a half dollars. <laughs> it's very it's very easy to spend money. <laughs> so, hey, so yeah, stop thinking. Okay. <laughs> but they were all fun things. <laughs> um. Okay, so uh, and then actually under that we've we've got it's uh, time to start our collective bargaining again because we just did the we just did the one year. Um, uh, let's in participating. I de I definitely plan on and and again folks that that is up in the dark again um folks that that uh, that want to participate in the court and and brian is particularly as you being the you know the liaison with um you know with with folks but um i'd like to participate i assume brian you should you should participate i hope you want to participate and i don't if if yeah uh, yeah I I know uh Roly, you and Dave, if you if you want to participate, it's you know um we know, we know this this is the one chastity doesn't participate in. I was gonna say I have to abstain from that, right? Yes, or yes. I, yeah. that. I figured, but I just wanted to confirm yeah. that. Okay. We're gonna let you do the personnel policies instead. <laughs> so and and when do they when would they like the Sort of the first get together, Ron. Trying for May seventeenth, four thirty. Okay, so before our regular meeting. Yeah, May seventeenth is Monday or third Monday at uh, four thirty. We'll meet downstairs, masks and separating. Uh, everybody's invited, kind of thing, to see where we're headed. We don't have we don't have a list or concern list at this point. Dave, you want to participate as well? I will. I'll try to make it, but I can't guarantee it. I'm pretty, I'm pretty well used up for this summer. Okay. And we can, we got a couple of weeks. We can, we can talk before then. Yeah. All righty. Um, Oh, and and uh, I think Ron, did you send out? We go, we got all sorts of stuff to do for the seventeenth. Um, the twenty twenty one work plan for the highway. Yeah, everybody should have that. Um, I'll be posting it on the highway page, probably either tonight or tomorrow morning. I'll post it on there for the public to review, and then um, we can talk about it if, with any questions or ads or deletes at the May seventeenth. Okay. Um, anybody got anything else? 
Are we planning to meet in person May 17th? Is that the plan? If people are comfortable doing that. If somebody isn't comfortable doing that, then you can call in. Okay. I, th I think we'll sort of start with the just having um, the board in person and keep everybody distance for a while and just we'll kind of play it by ear, I guess. So as of uh, the 8th, uh, I will be uh, getting done work at the facility and coming back to Morrisville. And so I'll be uh, working again up. Monday through Friday out of Morrisville. The cruise will be starting up, I believe, around the 1st of June. Oh, all right. That must feel better. Yeah, looking forward to it. But the uh, uh, state hasn't... Uh, sent anything to us yet to how it's going to look like but uh, i'm looking forward to hearing what they have to say yeah yeah well and to be back in morrisville and the whole thing that's oh that's great brian that's great uh, uh, where, where are we with uh opening the town office so we're still under the governor's uh yep we're still following what the governor's saying okay and no, none of it's open yet because uh, I'm seeing that a lot of towns, who did you see posted in the paper, just reopened the office? Was it one of the towns? I can't tell which one it was, but now is, is that up to us as select board members to say we want the office open or is that up to Kim being, being her own person being elected to do it? The select board decides on opening the, the building or closing the buildings. You know, you, you say open the office. The office is open except by appointment. So the, I think what you're talking about is open access for anybody to walk in at any time is what you're talking about. So just to, just to be clear, some people hear you say that, and I think they think the office has been closed for 18 months. So it's really opening the public to walk-ins you know walk in without an appointment right without without an appointment i stand corrected I just, <laughs> and, so we are yeah. we are getting we are getting close to that point i think the idea is that july 4th for sure if if those vaccination rates keep going we're almost at where the governor wanted to be so once we get to 70 yeah. percent vaccinated first dose for 16 years and older then the governor's plan is completed which was the vermont forward plan and he set an art somewhat artificial date of july 4th to remove the mandated to encouraged fast and the board the board will need to make another decision about that so the last meeting you had you said follow the governor's recommendations which is what we're doing once the governor's plan changes on july 4th then the board needs to make another decision which is how do you want to run the office? Do you want to have no appointments and encourage Kim to make that happen? Which would, you know, her her call right now, the only thing that she's told me is that when the July 4 date comes, she'll, she'll have the office open to walk in. She'll wear a mask and she'll encourage other people that are not comfortable to wear a mask, but it's not a mandate anymore so you know the density of the building and how we deal with that i think is going to be up to the board but it's really your decision at that point up until july 4th it's the governor saying you know do remote meetings have your spacing wear your mask all those things we've been doing continue you know through through july 4th i'd like to hear from kim too uh what uh what she needs due to her situation so I'm here. I'm oh, here. Kim. Hi, Brian. I'm I was here. just going to say the same thing. So, yeah. um, one of the things that a lot of offices are looking at, and if they're all over the place because every office is configured differently, you know, some offices have a long hallway with clerk's offices branched off, lister's offices branched off. We don't have that. We have a wide open spot with the clerk's office and the lister there together. Um, Ron's got an office, Allie's got an office, and 
our our research area is set up for two computers so two people to research we have actually had six or seven people into research at a time and they've been spread out all over the counter the the break room table the little table in the vault um we can't do that immediately at july 4th um a lot of clerks saying they're going to open up their lobby for walk-ins um, but they're going to try and keep the appointment book so that they can limit the number of people in their clerk slash vault research area because they've got small research areas and they don't want you know multiple two four six people in there plus the clerk staff so it's just going to be really interesting to see what the governor says um and you know what the recommendations are going to be i'm not comfortable even though i'm fully vaccinated now i'm not comfortable going without a mask because i if i i i can't mandate people to prove that they've been vaccinated and i, I wouldn't do that i'm just saying if people don't want to be vaccinated that's their call but i and i can't ask them about that so to protect myself I'm just going to continue to wear a mask, and if people feel the same way as I do, then they can wear a mask. But if they don't, well, I'm going to. Um, but I can't go back to having you know five or six or seven right. people in the vault at a time. Well, Kim, and it I, sounds as though through this process that the having folks make an appointment has worked out pretty well. And if you're if we're we're back to there are more hours available. Um, to me it doesn't seem unreasonable for folks to schedule themselves so you don't so you don't have more than two people at a time there right and i don't uh, see that i, last, I, I also see that last i don't see that appointment lasting forever i think it's more just you know what's going to happen this winter what you know how is this going to you know what i mean how is it going to really right. fade away and hopefully not ramp back up again. You know what I mean? Right. But I think if you look into it a little bit deeper, if you have the right to ask these people if they've been vaccinated or not, and if they haven't been, then would be the people who would not come in. Now, I heard something about that in the last couple of weeks here, and I don't know exactly where it is, but you put a sign down there on that door, and if you haven't been vaccinated, you're not coming in. I don't think we can do that, Ron. Can yeah, you we? can. You can. I'll tell you what. It, it is right. Just a minute. I think we have a right to. There is some rules. I think Rolly's right. They did make some rules about asking the question. People can refuse to tell you, but I think you can ask or something. And I think we can make it mandatory for people it's to still wear masks. Medical and religious. So yeah, one of the it was actually just tonight before we started. It was on the news that you could okay. ask people, but it was um, religion was one of them and medical. And medical. Okay. But you can ask them if they've had their vaccination. If they haven't, then they are not supposed to come in. That was right on the news. So, I sent Susan a message um, that I don't think went through quite yet, which is fine because it wasn't like urgent or anything. But one of the things that I would be very interested in is a little bit of that money coming from the federal government to finish getting our records online back to 40 years so that if I tell somebody they can't come in, they can at least research 40 year, you know, do a 40 year title search online. <clears throat> right now they can go back to 37 years but title insurance companies require them if on a purchase to do a 40-year search and i don't quite have that so i would be interested in a little bit of that whatever that federal money is to get the rest of those records online you know i like that so idea people can, yeah so people could research that and i don't think you know we just we just put 10 or 15 years online and that was Thirty thousand dollars. So it's not going to cost that much money. There's um, three years worth of, worth of land records plus property transfer tax returns, and so you know I don't think it's going to be 
maybe 10,000, maybe 15 at the top. Kim, do, so we, just a thought. We, Kim, would we lose any revenue if we did that? No. No, when people research online, viewing the record doesn't cost them any money. But if they want to print the document, it's $3 a page. So if they feel that $3 a page is too much, then they come into the office and they pay a dollar a page, but they're paying $4 an hour for research time in the office, plus their time, plus the gas to get to the office. So they have found during COVID that the cost is basically the same. So I, I, I'm, I'm confused. If they're, if they're paying $4 an hour to sit in our office and research, or they can do it at home sitting at their, or their office sitting at their desk and not paying $4 an hour, aren't we losing revenue? No, we're still gaining revenue. They may come in, they may do their research at home and they decide they have a 15 documents they want to print but they don't want to pay the $3 a page. So they come in the office, they're in the office for 10, 15 minutes at the research desk, fitting out those pages right from the computer, paying a dollar a page plus a dollar for research time. Oh, so, so it's a PDF or something, something you can't print at home. Right. They, oh, they can print at home, it's $3 a page. So we're they, getting half. We're getting half, and they're and profile who's housing all yes. of the images and providing all the software for it is getting half. So we're getting a dollar per page yep. plus yep. basically a fifty cent per page convenience fee. Thank you. Yeah. Guess over my head. I I, I believe you. I believe you can, but just don't. Technology stuff. They, what do they do, Kim? Just they pay it online with like yeah. a credit card, and then yeah, the print their print on their printer at home. Oh, if you have a printer compatible, right? Got it. Well, so it'll print to any printer from your computer. Okay, hey, and Kim, I got one more question. Uh, not being around the office, so I don't know if even if you have hired somebody, but have you hired somebody to take Kristen's place? Yeah, I hired her. Uh, her name is Chris, uh, Krista Jones, and she started April 19th, so she's starting her third week. Going well? She's doing very well. She's very Good. happy, and I'm very happy. Good. That sounds like a great note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have anything else? Well, yeah, I got this, uh, yeah, Dave. I got one more thing. Uh, uh, the center road here. Uh, we're Percy putting those culverts. I think Rolly hit it the other day because I know I hit it every day. I don't know what happened to that culvert the first one north of the four corners but i'm telling you that is extremely extremely dangerous uh percy got, come up to fix it last week sometime and they made they made it six inches deeper than it was and uh, uh i called mark today asked him if he could bring up some uh, stain that or some some stuff to put in it and he said he would contact percy and have them do it you know, I can't see what the town can't do it for safety factors. Uh, and another thing I noticed going down through, looking over the banks, there there's still pieces of crap over and uh, stuff has not been picked up yet. So is that town responsibility or person? Yeah, Should so, be Percy. Yeah, so both any of that stuff is Percy. Um the reason why Mark won't do it is because it's warranty work. We can't interfere with that or else we'll own that repair. So we can't touch that one. Percy took that under warranty. Well, I can um, tell you one thing. If somebody don't get up there and fix it, Dave's absolutely right. Because there's going to be a problem. 
somebody's going to hit that with a motorcycle and go right in for in. I, I don't care who the warranty is on it then. Yeah, no, it's a, no, it's a good point. I'm just saying that that's why he didn't touch it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they get to it right away, but they meant to leave it and then let it pack like they normally do. And, you know, they should be topping it off every night if they're really doing a good job. Yeah, so I don't know if that culvert is collapsing or, or, or what, because the rest of the culverts aren't doing that. It's just that one. I know they did actually pretty good with all that number of cuts they put across the road. So mm -hmm. there's, there okay. could be one thing going on there, Dave. Just what, what, have to get in there and check the collars. They could have split apart on the collar, but either that it's a hell of a void in there. But I would yeah. almost believe that they better check them collars. Okay, and here's my point. Somebody, Ron, could you call uh, Mark tomorrow and see if he'd follow up on that? With yeah, no, we'll, we'll take care of both of them tomorrow. Okay. Over and out. Okay. I got one okay. question here. Sure. How long's Jason been here now? How's that going? I haven't heard nothing about anything here. I just wondered how it was going. Uh, three months in, he's got three more months on probation. Right. And uh, as far as I know, he's he's working with Mark on uh, expectations. <laughs> so as far as I know, they're in communication and trying to figure out how to you know the the methods and means type of issue so mark's expectations what jason brings trying to make sure it works for both parties and it's a growing thing I, there's no major major issues that i've heard of yet okay okay i just wonder you know that mark mark wants to keep working with i said that's exactly what you're supposed to be doing during probation mark keep keep talking to him okay okay Okay, Brian, you got anything? Rolly, anything else, I, Dave? I think I'm all set. I'm all set. You're all set? Cassidy, all set? Yeah, did did the guys, I meant to ask my brother, but was a lot of green up done? Oh, a yeah. Lot of green up in Hyde Park? Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah, we did, green up was, whoo, green up was great. I think um, before the day, 43 roads had been claimed and then on Saturday both in up at the up in North Hyde Park and down here in the village we gave away lots more bags and people were doing lots more the um, the, the uh, Dave and you'll see the ATV club um, did a did a great job including hiking off into the swamp and dragging a sofa out and getting that taken care of I saw there are a couple of people that found that kind of stuff and brought it up and got it on the road to get rid of it. So, yeah, so we really, it, uh, yeah, there was, there was a big turnout. It was terrific. Good. I, I see on the, the Facebook or whatever it was that Marlene's looking at, uh, oh, some member of the ATV club had on there, and I guess they picked up a lot of bags, which, yeah. uh, which brings up another thing is next week i think it is or sometime that uh, marshall having that big wahoo on the atv people in uh, in uh, marshall uh would anybody have a fence if i'm not saying i'm going to but if i went to that meeting if i did get up in and say that uh, we allowed the atv atv people on our dirt roads and a few of our blacktop roads to connect and uh, i i haven't had any complaints i don't know about anybody else you select people have but uh, i know on the silver ridge road dave there's been a couple complaints i think if i was you i'd stay out of that one but that's just my opinion yeah but the the, the complaint comes out of silver ridge road lives in more yeah the high park the high park end is fine from what i've been reading yeah yeah, well, better leave it alone. Yeah, I, yeah, but it, but it's I I and I think um, before this all blew up, uh, the the Johnson and Hyde Park and and uh, Morristown chairs had a had a conversation, and uh, I told them that I think I think the reason it worked well for us is when they came to us and Dave, you worked with them, and they came in with a plan. 
So, and it wasn't opening up all our roads and turning everything loose. Is here's the plan, and here's what we need to connect. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it, it was uh, very organized and very structured. And I told them, yes, you know, you know, enforcement is an issue. Um, nobody expects Roger to be able to do more, and that when there have been concerns, that we have reached out to the club, and they've been very responsive and very helpful. And um, so we. We've had a good experience with them, but I think it's because, again, it was all planned. It's not just like this giant open up all your roads and turn everybody loose. Yeah. Has anyone, all right. has anyone come to anyone about opening up more roads in Hyde Park? They're pretty happy yeah. with what's already open, apparently. Yeah, because yeah. what, what they opened was the, uh, the, the dirt roads, Joss, in any of the uh, Blacktop that they're allowed to ride on was in the, the short connections between the dirt roads. But you know, uh, uh, and a, on a busy weekend up here, if we see two dozen, and that would be extreme, I'm going to say a dozen people go by, and, and they're, they're not all young people, they're families with kids, and they're all helmeted up. They're, you see yeah. me. <laughs> But, but you know, there's families, and, and people's got to realize that beans cost twenty thousand dollars a piece. And we got to register them, we got to insure them, and uh, you know, we got to wear the helmets and follow the rules. And and, and people, it, it's a way of life for some of the people. It's their entertainment. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if somebody's got to hear, a, I, I'd rather hear a four wheeler go by and I had a Harley. Yeah. Well, and I think. I, I think part, you know, it's like any, it's like anything, there will be a few people that will give the entire sport a bad reputation. That's right. Or 15 Harleys going by all at one state. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> 15 Harleys don't go by all at once. You can hear them for about five minutes before and after. <laughs> that's true. But the new, the new things the last couple of years is the radio that on the road things. Yes. <laughs> it's a what? Yes. It's the radios radio. on them. They got radios on them, or cassette players or something on their motorcycles. Oh yeah, I can hear. I can hear them. I can hear them in my, hear hear my kitchen. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Got a second. Nope, people want to keep talking? <laughs> no, I'm sucking it. Can't do that. Oh. <laughs> okay, all in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. Right. Aye. aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody enjoy a rainy week. <laughs> <laughs>